But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes in it. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please invite your friends. And don't forget if you don't like what we do to give us like and don't forget to give us dislike if you like what we do. Uh, I'm assuming talking to Muslims. Uh, so today our topic is Allah. Why Allah don't show himself? If we go in the Quran, we see that the Quran speak of that Allah he is not going to show himself because he is wearing a veil you know all of you know like a guy his name Mimi hijab hijab is a word mean veil supposedly according to Muslims not according to me here we see a female Muslim huh? she is saying and by the way, this is a very, this is a clear uh, proof that she is a very religious person. And I will tell you why. If you look at her eyebrows, you can tell she never took one hair from her eyebrows. She, she took. Uh, but I mean, they keep them white to make themselves look like still believers. Because, you know, if a Muslim woman, she takes some hair from her eyebrows, she go to hell. But she can shave her private part. Very weird religion. You can take hair from down, you cannot take hair from up. Anyway, so here she is saying hijab is our right. And I ask myself, I mean, is it, it's a right if you ask for it, but you did not choose it, they force it on you. So what right you are talking about? Uh, what about beating you? You know, the Quran says, chapter 4, verse number 34, that if the woman, she is rebellion, or he feared to be rebellion, he can beat the hell of you. Now I know you will say he beat me lightly. Uh, first of all, it's a punishment, and lightly beating, that will be ticklish. So your, your lie is, doesn't make sense. But now our topic is not about women wearing hijab. Our talk about Allah wearing hijab. Let us go to the Quran, because the Quran will speak of everything we need. I will not really take me long to find a verse. I will just type in Arabic hijab. You know, like in Arabic, in case you do not know, you know, it's different from English, you know? So in English, like, uh, most of I'm typing in English now. Let's just switch. So, like in English, when you type, you know, you start from the left of the page to the you know right. In Arabic, is the opposite. And the same for when you open a book. You know, many people they like you know uh, they get confused, so they open the book from the end, thinking it's the same as English, but in Arabic is different. So the left is the beginning of the book. And here, by the way, this is a problem because remember, in Islam, left is evil. So why the Quran is opening from the left? Uh, sorry, uh, from, uh, the Quran is opening from the right because supposedly Islam is not evil, or because the Arab they are doing the language since before Islam. So here, the Muslims they try to always uh, uh, to make things up. Like I, I heard somebody saying, "Oh, the Quran opened from the right, and the Quran must be right because it's open from the right." 
But there's books, all of them, they open from the right, including the Christian Bible in Arabic. So, you know, it's a very funny statement. However, we go to hijab and we search for it. Hijab means uh, veil. And then we will find that the word hijab is mentioned in the Quran many times. All right. Uh, I will not look for those, you know. All those words have hijab. I will go to the one about Allah. In chapter 42, verse number 51, it says, uh, let us zoom here. It says, it's not for Allah to speak to anyone and, uh, you know, except by inspiration or from behind a veil or hijab. Let us click at the verse. And read it together. Again, this is a chapter 42, verse number 51. So it's not, it was not allowed for a, for a human to speak that Allah will speak to him except by inspiration. Or Allah, he speak from behind the veil to him. I found a video of, of uh, Zakir Naik and Zakir Naik is answering a question which is exactly what we are talking about uh, why Allah don't show himself now Zuzu is the best to answer those questions so if we go there let us see this is Mr. Zuzu Zakura was asked the question that one of his non-Muslim friends, she asked him the question that why doesn't Allah, the God in Islam, show himself? Like in other religions, they can see God. Why don't you? Why can't we see the God of Allah in Islam? The reason, in, the reason is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Islam is the true Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he shows himself, you will not be able to live. It's so powerful. And the example we have in the Quran in Surah Taha, then Musa alayhi salam says, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to see you. So Allah says, I will show my glimpse to the mountain. You look what happens to the mountain. So when Musa alayhi salam turns his head to the mountain, Allah shows his glimpse to the mountain and Musa alayhi salam faints. You know, here we see that Muhammad is copying verses from the Bible. If you go to Exodus, chapter 33 and you read it from verse 17 18 etc you will find that this is exactly what Musa says to God uh, uh, Muhammad taking the story but there is no glimpse and mountains etc so uh, uh, God he said to Musa uh, no one can see my face my face not just not see me my face and live it's not allowed it's not allowed uh, actually, let me go to the verse. And let us zoom in a little bit. Here you will see. Uh, when God he appeared to Moses and he spoke to him uh, Moses says to him show me your glory I pray and he said I will make all my godness pass before you and I will proclaim before you the name the Lord and I will uh, be gracious gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy, on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one shall see my face, uh, shall see me, and live. So, uh, uh, you know, Musa is asking to, to see the face of God, and God says to him, No one shall see me, for if you see my face, you cannot live. 
uh, now we can say uh, like you know he's very glorious etc you know you are nothing you are like a, an insect you will be demolished you will be destroyed but remember here as long as we believe that God is almighty then God still can show himself how you know let us say you cannot your nature as a human uh, cannot handle more than a certain degree of fire or heat if the heat increase more than a certain degree you would die you know like if your body reach 41 42 43 you know you say bye bye uh, so but can god show himself absolutely he can Musa is asking to see god as he is but remember because god is almighty still he can show himself but not let us say with his uh, powerful glory he can humble or he can show some of uh, uh, to prove to Moses who he is if we go in the Quran we will find that Muhammad because he's a thief he took a story from the Bible we know that when Moses he came he saw uh, a fire in a bush but the bush is not really burning but there's a fire there which is strange so if we go in the Quran we will find the following. Let us go to the verses about Moses in chapter 28, verse number 30. Chapter 28, Al Qasas, verse number 30, it says that when Moses reached, he was going with his family and when he was with his family night came and he saw fire somewhere like from the other side of the valley so he said to his family you know what i'm going to go and get this fire you know grab little of it so we can light fire and you know we cook maybe we eat whatever we eat so moses walk in that direction and when he got close to the fire as you see here it says when he reached uh, the fire uh, he was called from the right side of the valley in the blessed place from the tree O Moses verily I am Allah the Lord of the world Muslim they believe that there is two Al-Alamin here not the word only there is two words there is a word of uh, genie and the word of a human which is very funny because he forgot the angels he skip it so anyway so he said i am the lord of the uh, the two world the genie and mankind and then uh, here you see something very weird in the story what does this have to do with the verse before it And to throw your stick, but when he saw it moving, as if it were a snake, he turned in a flight, and look, uh, look not back. And then Moses, uh, he draw near, and uh, he said to him, Moses, draw near, and fear not. Verily, you are, uh, 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 you are of those who are secure. So, uh, you know, here there's a trick. Allah showing him like some tricks. How, what he can do and then i mean the the, the verses really uh, is you know very weird i mean what this have to do with this verse you know you go into the pharaoh what have to do with with the uh, the fire in the bush there's you know i mean they are not connected just a stupid quran as usual but look what happened if we go to the from verse on the quran we will find the following Uh, 
in chapter 20 this is why the Quran is a very silly book you cannot even find one story in one place uh, so when Musa is the same story repeated but here there is no the mix of the Pharaoh and all the crazy stuff so here it says has the stories of Moses reached to you then here you ask yourself Allah is speaking to who if he's speaking to Muhammad well how Muhammad he knew the story of Moses if the Quran says he do not know the book he never have faith before was Muhammad a Jew secondly the Muslim they say well the Old Testament is corrupt and the New Testament so how and where and from who Muhammad will learn the story of Moses that's mean the book must be true and the Jewish not teaching false uh, regarding Moses so when he saw the fire he said to his family hold on I'm going to provide the fire I will bring some you know and then when he come to the fire a voice called out Moses which means Moshe verily I am your Lord take off your shoes you are in a actually in holy ground, Sacred Valley. And here the Muslim, by the way, because they don't know what this word means, they say Tawa. Now, if we try to find out what Tawa means, you will find the Muslims are getting dizzy as usual. And the end of the explanation is Allah knows best. Uh, because Muhammad is a thief and he is stealing words from other languages, they do not know what it means. But what we need notice here. That Moses is not allowed to not to walk in this area, and he have to take off his shoes because it's a holy ground. If we ask the Muslims, and I don't know if we have how many we have of them in the chat, why uh, Moses have to take off his shoes? Was Allah there? The Muslims they have no idea what to say because how the ground become holy and why it's holy, they don't know. Then they continue, and then he says, I myself, and again, this is the Muslim translation, choosing, choosing you, uh, therefore give ear to what I is revealed. Verily am Allah. Okay. Now the story here, we will stop here. The story here, we will stop. Until now, as you see, Moses came to the fire. When he arrived close to the area where the fire is, Moses was cold. And the one is talking. He said to him, take off your shoes. You've been chosen. And then now he said to him, I am Allah. Let us go to the different verse so we can see how the story you know developed Islam is made by an idiot we will find that the story is different in different verse let us go here in chapter 28 we are going back to the previous chapter. In verse number 30, it says, So when he reached the fire, he was called from the right side of the valley in the blessed place from the tree where Allah is speaking. He is speaking from the tree. If we ask Muslims, was Allah is inside the tree? The Muslim, they were refraining from answering. If we ask the scholars, the scholars will fight with each other and they will say, Allah knows best. If we ask the Quran, the Quran says, from the tree. Does it say, guys, from the tree? Does it say in the verse in front of us, from the tree? It says that, right? So why the Muslims are not willing to give the answer when the answer is in front of us why do they say yes it's coming from the tree because that will make it a, a, a problem like there's a problem here for this religion the muslim they keep saying allah cannot go inside uh, his creation and the tree is a creation of allah so how allah is in the tree that is a problem 
And here we notice that the Muslims, in one hand they say Allah is almighty, in the other hand they say Allah cannot be inside a tree. Now how he is almighty, but yet a tree is a problem for him. Secondly, how he is the all Allah almighty, who cannot be inside a tree, he is saying, and this is his words, from, a, from the tree. You see, not from behind the tree, not from the top of the tree, not from underneath of the tree, from the tree. So the voice of Allah is coming from where? It's coming from the tree. So where is Allah? If you are a Muslim, you know, I will be happy to see your answer so we can, uh, you know, find out the solution for this problem. But look what happened now. We heard Zakarnaik saying that Allah cannot show himself. Right? Okay, wonderful. Allah speaking from the tree. No problem. Allah is inside the tree. All right. Who is the one inside the tree? The Muslim do not know. So is it a voice only coming from the tree? Or it is God of Islam inside the tree? Or it was an illusion? We will find the answer in the different verse. Let's see. In chapter 27, and as I say, the Quran is a stupid book. You cannot find one story in one place. It's all over the place. It's like somebody, he had papers in the table, and somebody, he turned the fan on. And then all the papers, they went in the street, and then they tried to make a book, and they put the papers together. So page number one became number, became number page number 300. So when he reach, I mean, look at this. I mean, why, why, the, why the verses, or why the chapters, why, I mean, what this is. So look at this. So when he arrived, he arrived at the tree, right? He saw the fire, no problem. And look what happened now, the story is different. So when he reached to it, he reached to what? To the fire. Here it does not mention the tree at all, it mentioned a fire. But when he reached to it, he was called saying, blessed is who is ever is in the fire and who is ever is round about it. Okay, so now we confirm that there is somebody inside the fire. I change any Muslim to tell me who is inside the fire. So if it is not Allah who is inside the fire, who is the fi who is inside the fire? And if it's Allah, Allah is saying it's a, bl a blast is the one in the fire. Muhammad as a thief, he copies story from the Old Testament and he starts adding spices to it. And the more spices he add, the more silly he got. So now we have someone is inside the fire and that person is a blast. Who is he? Do we have any Muslim can tell us? Verse number nine, it says, Musa's Lu, it is Allah, the might and the wise, the mighty and the wise. This I'm reading the Muslim translation. So putting all those verses together, a voice came from the tree, the voice saying, I am Allah. Is that correct? A voice came from where? From the tree. From the tree. Chapter 28, verse number 30. So the voice coming from the tree, and the voice saying, I am Allah. So where is Allah? In the tree. Then we go 
to chapter 27 it says blessed who is in the fire okay but where is the fire the fire is in a tree the fire is in the tree are we guys following the fire is in the tree the voice came from the fire the voice come from the tree and all the all the verses as we see confirm what we are saying now if Allah was not inside the tree and he is saying I am Allah yet the voice is coming from the tree and then this God Allah he says blessed is the one who is in the fire You will notice that chapter 28, verse number 30, says that this is a holy ground. This is, he was called from a holy ground. From the tree. So, it is a holy ground. It is from the tree. The fire in the tree. And the one who is inside the fire is blessed. As we see in chapter 27, verse number 8. So who was in the tree? Isn't it obvious this is Allah? Now, here we need to ask ourselves a very serious question. The Muslim, they say, Allah, he cannot speak to you unless he is wearing a veil. Was he wearing a veil when he appeared to Moses? As a fire? Was a lot of fire? Again, where is the voice coming from? Where is the voice coming from? The voice is coming from the tree. From where to? From the fire. How we know that he is inside the fire? Well, the verse says, Blessed is the one who is inside the fire. Who is inside the fire? And here I find it strange that Allah, he says to himself, blessed. But, you know, the Quran, all of it is like this. Blessed be Allah. Allah is saying, blessed be Allah. So now we notice that when the Muslim, they say that they are trying to copy a statement from Exodus chapter 33, that nobody can see me and live. That is not really a, a correct statement. You cannot see my face, God said to Moses in Exodus. For no one shall see me and live. Now, we can say because of his glory, we can say because how powerful he is, but we can say too that God don't want anyone to see him and live. As simple as that. But we knew that Jesus said, that he saw the Father. No one knows the Father except me. If God is almighty, and from the might of God, he can appear in any form he want. And appearing in a form is a way to humble himself so you as a creature can live. And the verse in the Quran proving that Muhammad is a fraud for in one hand he claimed that God is not a changeable. God is a fixed God with his, uh, you know, whatever at like a, a statues he have. And then we find he is copying a story from the New Testament, from the Old Testament, saying it clearly that God, he can appear. And actually in Exodus, you will see that Moses, he saw God but he saw him he saw him from the back he did not see his face if you continue reading actually you will see and while my glory passed by uh, 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 like he, uh, 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 like sorry god he told uh, the lord he told moses uh, go stand in this place 
and I will pass by. And when I'm passing by, I'm going to protect you by my hand. I will cover you until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face you shall not see. Let's open the Bible. So it's very possible for God, you know, His God is Almighty. Why we call Him Almighty? That He can, He's able to protect you. And it's not Him veiling Himself. As you see here, He is protecting Moses. He is not covering Himself, He is covering Moses. If we go in the Quran, we will find that Allah. He will not show himself because he cannot. And Allah, he will never speak to anyone except from behind a veil. Which means the stories about Moses does not fit in Islam for Allah. He cannot. You see, he cannot. He can speak to you from behind a veil. And he is the one is behind the veil, not you. He is the one behind the veil. And here we ask ourselves, you see in the Bible it says that God, he put his hand. And it's very uh, acceptable to know that the hand of God is, the, is, her, is God, you know. Like he is, he is uh, giving protection. He protecting you by his power. Here, Allah is using a veil, which is his creation, to make it simple for you. We just heard uh, uh, Zakarnaik saying that you cannot see God, and even when God he saw a little a glimpse of himself to the mountain. The mountain, what happened? The mountain collapsed, destroyed. To the mountain, you look what happens to the mountain. So when Musa a.s. turns his head to the mountain, Allah shows his glimpse to the mountain and Musa a.s. faints. Okay. Now, taking this into consideration, how we will fix this problem? Because now we have a veil which is no no different from a mountain it's a created by allah supposedly is this veil is allah creation is it material obviously it is so how the veil can stop anything if a mountain can be destroyed are you listening to me, people? Do you understand what my idea? So Allah, he showed his glimpse to the mountain. And then what happened to the mountain? The mountain was destroyed. Mountains is rocks and, you know, solid object. And mountain don't see. The mountain don't see. I mean, mountain is a mountain, right? It don't have eyes, don't have a spirit, don't have a soul. It is not a living creature. But we can say, well, because a mountain is a rock anyway, and because the glory of uh, this God is so powerful, supposedly, well, this mountain demolished, no problem. But now we have a veil which is enough to stop the glorious of Allah to go through. Anyone getting my idea now, what I'm trying to say? So who is more powerful, Allah or the veil? Any Muslim can help us? How a veil can stop the glory of Allah from going through? If the veil can stop the glory of Allah from going through, that means the veil is more strong than Allah. Any Muslim? 
You see, a Muslim woman, she wear a veil because she cannot hide herself unless there is a veil. Allah is saying that he cannot hide himself unless he use the veil. So Allah is not almighty for he need a veil in order to hide. He need a burqa so you will not be able to see him. So it is not part of his power to hide himself from you. It's not part of his power to like uh, not to reveal himself to you. He need to use a veil. And the verse in the front of you. Any Muslim? In the top of that, nobody can see Allah. Is that an excuse? So we will not question where is this God? Why he don't do anything? Why he is mute? Why he is silent? Why he is deaf? Why he is blind? Why he don't? What is he? You see, the God of the Christians, he came to us. He came physically as a man. God can humble himself. God can humble himself so we can see him. He's almighty. And as long as we call him almighty, it means there is no and nothing can stop him from doing as what he want, as he want. Allah, Muslim, they call him almighty. Yet he cannot hide himself unless he is from behind the veil and I want to focus with you with the word behind do you see the word behind and this is by the way accurate translation the word behind is exactly what it says in Arabic meaning we in wara hijab so where is Allah Allah is behind the veil It's not the veil in front of Allah. <laughs> I don't know if I make it complicated for you. You see, I can say, when I say the word behind, I am behind a wall. I am behind a wall. It's different from saying I am in front of a wall. Are you getting my point? What is different? Behind the wall, it's mean I am hiding behind the wall. I don't want to get out of this wall. I want this wall to be behind me and you. In the front of a wall, maybe I'm going to climb it. Maybe I'm going to break it. Maybe I'm going to destroy it. Maybe I'm building it. He is behind the veil. So he can hide behind the veil. So if Allah move away from the veil, we can see Allah. A mountain, if he see the glimpse of Allah, the mountain will be destroyed. A veil, nothing happened to it. It's a waterproof, fireproof, gloryproof, all kind of powerproof. The purpose of the veil is supposedly Allah want to hide himself. He want to speak to you from behind the veil because you cannot go, you cannot see him and live. He's copying this verse from the Bible. So Allah is using a veil. You see, if we go in the Exodus, we will see that God, he covered Moses by his hand. He did not need a veil, you know, and he did not veil himself. He veiled Moses by protection. So he protected Moses. So God can do that. The God of Islam, he is veiling himself from everybody. And he cannot veil himself without a veil. And the proof that of that, he is saying behind, and behind is, is you know, a, state, a state of physical place, like he is standing in a physical point. 
and this point is behind the veil. So there's a veil. It's not, the veil is not uh, uh, like metaphorical. You know, he did not use the hijab. Is the same one he ordered the women to wear. The same word used in the Quran is hijab for the women, in many places. Hijab is a hijab. So Allah is standing behind the veil. Why? Because it's not for any mortal uh, to speak to Allah except by revelation or from behind the veil. And here we have another problem. How Muhammad here received the Quran? How Muhammad received the Quran. If you go in, in the in the city book of Muhammad, you will see Muhammad says that it is inspiration. Chapter 53, verse number 4. It is only an inspiration that inspired. That's mean everything Muhammad said about receiving messages from an angel, his name is Jibreel, is a lie. Because inspiration is different from delivery. Is that correct? Let us say I'm watching somebody is uh, doing some art. So he inspired me to draw like him. I learned some stuff from him, but he inspired me to do something. So inspiration is not a person coming to you and he says to you, say this. As an example, uh, when the angels came to Mary in the Quran, which is a story starting from the Bible, and they said to her, uh, you know, um, Mary, you will have a son, holy son. Is that an inspiration? Anyone who knows what the word inspiration, he will say no. That is not inspiration. Inspiration is something can happen in your mind, in your heart. But not somebody coming to your door and speaking to you face to face. That is not inspiration. That can be considered revelation. Like I will reveal to you a message, but this is not inspiration. So Allah, he did not, or Allah, he will not talk to anyone except by inspiration or, or revelation from behind the veil. Allah did not do none of those to Muhammad. You got my point? Allah did not re make revelation to Muhammad from behind the veil. And if the Muslim can show me the reference, I will be grateful. All of us, we knew that the Muslim, they claim that when he was in the cave, an angel came to him and he squeezed him three times and there's no mayonnaise was coming out. And then after he squeezed him, he told him, uh, read. And Muhammad is illiterate, according to Muslims, which is a stupid story. So why you say to him, read, if the guy cannot read? And if you say recite, this is what he meant, that will be more stupid because recite is something you repeat from your memory, not something you just do not know what it is. So either way is a stupid statement, stupid story. But as you see, the angel is not a revelation. The angel is an angel. And Muhammad never been receiving inspiration. But yet Muhammad himself, he says, it is nothing but inspiration. But Muhammad never received inspiration. So what we will do with this guy? So his God is almighty, yet he cannot do certain things unless it is from behind the veil. And he claimed that he is so glorious, the same as the God of Moses, the God of the Christians. This is why nobody can see him and live. No problem. But God of the Christians, he can. He can make someone see him but not necessarily the way he is and live this is what we have jesus jesus is god who humble himself jesus is the humble image of the glorious god for god is almighty he can humble himself the god of islam he cannot and even when he want to hide himself he need to use a veil now, veil is something we used for uh, for females, right, in Islam. 
and it is an obligation for Muslim women. The Muslim, we saw the picture, says, it is my, hijab is my right. It, a right is something you ask for, not something you've been forced to. Uh, like, you know, if you go in the Bible, we will see as an example, the disciple of Jesus, they wrote the Bible by inspiration from God. Not only they wrote what they heard from Jesus, but they were inspired. Or the book of Act, or, you know, Revelation, the book of Revelation, etc. So that is an inspiration. But you, Muhammad, never received an inspiration, never even heard your God voice. So where is the inspiration fit? Nowhere. Allah as a God in Islam is a fiction God trying to copy the character of the Jewish God after Muhammad he lived between them so he started trying to make a copy counterfeit of the God of the Jews and he tried to make Allah which is the moon God fit with the Jewish God and he is trying to give him some stories from the stories of the, the Jewish books but as usual a thief he steal your bicycle, he, he put a new paint, he add uh, some features here and there to make you not to know that this is your bike, but he forgot that your bike have a number, a manufacturer number. He forgot to take it. And that shows all over the Quran. You know, there's a, there's a guy, he's an idiot, he, uh, his name is Daniel, he's a Muslim convert. He says Yahweh is a pagan God. He's a pagan God. And Allah is a true name of God. But then if we go in the Quran, we will find that all the names belong to the God of the Jews. Gabriel. This is stupid idiot, he claimed that Eel is a pagan God. <laughs> He is a pagan god, but yet the angels, all of the angels of the Quran, they have eel. If we go in the Quran, <clears throat> we will find this and we will love together. My keyboard is switching to different language. As an example, chapter 14, verse number 39, chapter 19, verse number 54, chapter 40, uh, 38, verse number 48, all of them speak about Ishmael. And here there's other name. You see it here. You will ask yourself, when the stupid Muhammad, he copied those names, did he ask himself what those names mean? And when the idiot, the Muhammadan, who tried to supposedly to put down Christianity and Judaism, and they say, oh, this is a pagan God, then we find that all characters who they are belong to Abraham are connected to Eel. Angels, Mikael, Gabriel, Israfil, those are, you know, Muslims, they have names. Some of them you never heard of, but all of them they end with Eel. Israel, Israel is the angel of death, Eel. So the funny Muhammad is, he have 99 names of his God. None of them is Eel. Yet all the names belong to Eel, not to Allah. So look what happened. If Ishmael belonged to the God of Islam, then his name should be Ishmael, Ishmael Allah. If Gabriel belonged to Allah, his name not, should not be Gabriel, should be Gabriel Allah. If uh, Mikael belonged to Allah, etc. So this is a stupid religion. All of it is a counterfeit. Stealing names, 
if you remember the that he was making fun of the struggle between uh, uh, Israel and God correct from the Old Testament he says you believe in this do you really believe in this the ignorant do not know that the second his stupid book quote the name it's mean his book agreeing with the story Otherwise, if we ask Muslims, what Israel mean? They don't know. What Ishmael mean? They do not know. Well, Israel is the one who struggle with God or the one who wrestle with God or, uh, uh, you know, like a similar meaning. So, and if you check the Quran, you will not find one verse in the Quran saying to us, how in the word Jacob became Israel? Nowhere in the Quran you will find that who, that, you know, you, you ask Muslims who is Israel? They will say Jacob. Say so where we can find that in the Quran? Where in the Quran we can find that Jacob is Israel? Nowhere. So because Muhammad is a thief and the Quran is not a book of God, this guy, he hears something, he make a statement about it, he add it to his book. There's no story. And there's no introduction. And it's a stupid because it's not his story. He do not know the story anyway. So suddenly, Oh, children of Israel, but shouldn't you tell us who is Israel so we will know who are they, those children? Suddenly, he have an angel, his name is Jibreel. If you remember when Muhammad, he went to Waraq ibn Nawfal, he never heard of this Jibreel. Who is this Jibreel? He never heard of him. Actually, if you watch our introduction video each time we play, you will see this guy, the ketchup boy, he said it clearly that Muhammad did not know who is Gabriel. He did not know. Listen carefully. He, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Did you hear it? He does not know who is Gabriel. So what was the religion of Muhammad? The pagan Arab God Allah. Nothing changed. So where Muhammad he learned about Gabriel? From Christians and Jews. And Muhammad, when the angel, so claimed angel, he came to him, did he say to him, even I am Gabriel? The story says no. Muhammad, he went to the cousin of the cousin of the cousin of the cousin of Khadija, which I believe is his, 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 his a tr a true father, Waraq ibn Nawfal. And Waraq ibn Nawfal, is the one who told him who is this this person who he met so imagine you are the one who met the person and you are the last one to know who you met who it is somebody else he's an old person he is the one who told Muhammad who is this person he told him this is Gabriel so if we go here if you remember the story when Muhammad he tried to commit suicide many times and that because, as the story says, uh, because uh, Waraka he died. Uh, and Waraka he died, he stopped receiving revelation. You will see this is the source of Islam coming from here. So Muhammad now is a pagan person who believe in Allah, the moon God. And now he is learning something new about new names, new stories. And he want to hijack it. He want to mix it with his God. So here we see that a person, he came to him, and you will see in the story, it says, that an angel came to him. But this is not Muhammad's statement. It's not Muhammad saying, an angel came to me. You know? The story came according to what they heard uh, uh, from Aisha. Aisha, she heard from Khadija. Or, you know, um, I believe uh, Aisha, she was very young to hear from Khadija. She died before her. Uh, uh, so she heard from 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 Khadija. The story is coming all belong to Khadija. So supposedly Muhammad he was in the cave. Somebody came to him and he starts squeezing him. And Muhammad did not know who is that. So when he went to uh, Khadija, he was really uh, in fear, terrified, and he was shaking. And he is not in the uh, in the stage of uh, peace. And that is additional proof that Muhammad did not really see. An angel of God because you see the angel of God can be scary for you 
if you know if you are doing something wrong and he's coming to punish you maybe but there is no reason for Muhammad to be terrified and scared and you will see that Muhammad he have a, like a, his his muscles start twitching and uh, you know going crazy and he shrink and he shiver and he says cover me cover me uh, you know and even he told his wife what's wrong with me Khadija you know you see it says his neck when he returned when he returned his neck muscles uh, twitching with terror till he entered upon Khadija and said cover me cover me they covered him uh, uh, till his fear was over so Muhammad here is suffering really from from very terrified time and he was in fear so was Muhammad did he see the devil did Muhammad the devil possessed him at this moment and he is why he was shivering but it cannot be angel you see when the angel came to Mary he says to her peace to you Mary shalom to you Mary blessed you are between the women here and Mary is a woman here this is a man he's 40 years old the Muslim they claim he is so brave and he did not see an angel with 600 wings according to the story he saw a man a man came to him so why is shivering and then the story continue and he said even to Khadija what's wrong with me and here you ask yourself why Muhammad did not know what's wrong if he saw an angel and this is the reason he is shivering why he's saying what's wrong with me so obviously the reason he is shivering have nothing to do with anything this person is mentally ill and he have you know like there's many many illness uh, they have the same uh, symptoms where a person you know he he fell down in the ground and he lose control of his hands and his uh, body and muscles start you know and start screaming and start shivering and uh, the Muslim they confirm that those things happened to Muhammad many times during his uh, childhood actually even the nurse you know the family of Muhammad they cast him away from the family because of this they thought to themselves this person this child is uh, you know controlled by the devil because he is normal sometime and sometime he go crazy uh, so they cast him out of the family and they ask a better woman, woman they told her we'll give you some money little money just let him you know grow with you or your kids nurse him the woman she sent him back she sent Muhammad back why because after he arrived to her house he collapsed in her house and they thought he is dead he fainted after all those things happened so this woman she feared that now those people they will accuse her that she mistreated him and he died and then she will become a big problem and this woman her name is Halima she sent him back to her family because of this so as you see here Muhammad he saw somebody he was in ter terrified and obviously terrified not because an angel because he's sick he's mentally ill and then Muhammad is still he do not know who is this person they come to Waraka Khadija she accompanied him to Waraka and she said to him to Muhammad tell him tell him what you what you saw and you will see here it says that Waraka he was a person who during the pre-Islamic period become a Christian in fact he is no Christian he is a Nasara and we will talk about that in different time it's a it's a it's a Christian cult and here it says he used to write the Arabic writing and used to write of the gospel that is the Quran and you will see here after he told him Waraka he said to him what you have seen tell me he told him he told him this is the Namos i.e. Gabriel the angel do you see it and here we notice that the angel he did not introduce himself he did not even say I'm an angel he did not give him a name. And Muhammad is taking what this guy is saying to him for granted. And from now on, this guy, his name is Gabriel. <laughs> so going back to our, our question about Allah, not showing himself, you will see that Muhammad, he went to the seven heaven. Muhammad, he went uh, to a place uh, 
It's called Al Baytul Ma'mur. And the angel Jibreel, he accompany Muhammad. And here the story is no no less funny and fiction than the story of Gog and Magog. If you remember, Muhammad he claimed that when he was uh, laying down two angels they came to him two men as usual they are two men and they took him they cut off they cut off his chest and they took all the material in his stomach in his belly and they took it all and they washed it with water from Zamzam as you see in the screen and after they washed it they filled his body and his veins with faith and wisdom they brought a golden tray with a golden dish and inside the golden tray and the golden dish there is faith and wisdom and then they stuff all the wisdom and all the faith on the veins of Muhammad now the story here as you see stupid crazy since then since when wisdom and belief come in dishes so even even faith in Islam is physical and this is telling you that Muhammad he have nothing to do with any religion this guy is mentally ill satanic demonic possessed faith coming in dishes if you remember we showed you a verse in the Quran says nothing but it is nothing but inspiration right nothing but inspiration so how the inspiration become dishes are you with me how the Quran says that Muhammad received nothing except inspiration and then we find that Muhammad he received dishes one dish full of faith and one dish full of wisdom and by the way if you ask me if I am wise or not the Muslim they say Christian prince is not wise and uh, I went to a Muslim doctor, he said to me, you know, no, you don't have a lack of vitamin D or C or A, no. You have a lack of dish of wisdom. So the mad Muhammad, you know, he went far with his stupidity to the point he made wisdom in dishes. Uh, let us go to the hadith, okay. Uh, where is the... Yeah, to see the and you know Allah he sent him a, a, a flying mule uh, here we go read with me and by the way in case you are looking for good faith and good wisdom we have you can contact me later and I will give you dishes uh, but they are expensive to be honest with you okay I mean I can make you so wise super wise we make them it's homemade dishes okay and they are very tasty and you like you know let's say you have you are a person who your wife she could complain about saying you things you say is stupid you know so she complained like you know you go with your friends and she said to you why you said that this is not smart so if you want to increase your wisdom and intelligence you can get our dish you know it's an Islamic dish made by the kitchen of Allah it's homemade so look what happened here it says after they wash his uh, chest and his heart and his stomach etc uh, here it says then a golden tray of belief was brought to me and my heart was washed all right let us go to uh, I want to see where it says uh, This stuff, you know, like you know, in in the Middle East, we have some food 
where you stuff like rice inside zucchini, and you know. This is exactly what they did to Muhammad. They stuff his veins with faith and wisdom. Uh, here we go. Uh, oh, look at this one. And then the angels, they took him till they carried him to the place him beside Zamzam, etc. And then they cut from his throat all the way to his balls. Look like Muhammad, you have balls. I thought you don't. And then out of his chest and abdomen, and then washed with Zamzam. And then uh, it says here, and then a gold tray containing a gold bowl full of believe and wisdom was brought and then Gabriel stuffed his chest and his throat and blood vessel with it and now we understand why Muhammad cannot be prophet of God I mean this guy he is so stupid to the point his God himself he needed to do plastic surgery you see the Muslim they say that Muhammad is a prophet and Allah is God and if you want something to happen he say B is going to be can't Allah make Muhammad wise without sending a dish of wisdom the first person in history who have a plastic surgery stuffing his chest with silicone of Allah it was Muhammad Allah want to take Muhammad to heaven he look at him he said look at this idiot I cannot take him like this what I will say to my angels, look what this, what the heck is that? So he said to the angels, listen, before you bring him here, you need to do some adjustment. Why Allah did not make a surgery to Moses? Hey Muslims, there's a question here to answer. I mean, the story of Gog and Magog, which is making Muslims live in Islam by thousands, if not millions. This is another story, no less why Allah did not okay here we go Allah he took Isa to him did Allah need to wash the chest of Isa with Zamzam did he need to give him wisdom and what wisdom what faith and since when faith and wisdom they come in dishes and if Muhammad he cannot meet Allah anyway what the point of the strip if Allah never spoke to Muhammad anyway so what the point of this journey If you remember, I don't know if you, how many of you saw the video we made yesterday? By the way, it's not listed in YouTube, but you can see it if you go to Patreon. You can click at the link there and you can view it and you can download it. It's hilarious funny because we have uh, 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 our friend uh, Yasser Kadi, peace be upon him. The whole in the narrative, he is giving any, another hole to the Quran and to Muhammad. You better watch it if you, don't, you did not see it yet, you know? It's really inspiring. And he explained how many Muslims are leaving Islam because of stupid stories like this in the Quran. Uh, so we had finished the issue of uh, Dajjal, and now we move on to the next of the major signs, and that is the issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And the issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is actually, for our modern times, I would say, one of the most, if not the most problematic of the signs of Judgment Day. And it has caused many of our youth to question, to doubt. I myself have met people that have actually left Islam because of these types of tales. This kind of tales are priceless. You see, the Muslims are facing the truth. You know, they keep denying. It's like Allah hiding behind the veil. So Allah, the Muslim, he, uh, Muhammad, he put his God behind the veil. And he said, now they cannot question who is Allah, where is Allah, because he's behind the veil. But as you see, this veil is not working. And the stupidity of Muhammad is beyond the veil issue. This guy, he come with the stories. It's, it's, it's not only laughable, it is just the most stupid ever. There's billions of creatures who we never saw, and they are like uh, us. And they are very aggressive and they will control the earth and nobody can see them and the uh, Zulqarnayn he built a dam between us and them 
and uh, you know this dam is exists for a thousand of years but we know that the satellite they have map for every inch and they are not under the sea because simply the dam is behind the dam not behind under the sea you know so the story is so stupid but this is we cannot blame this abdul here for the stupid story we blame the stupid maker of of the quran muhammad for his stupidity and look this is a story taught by Muhammad after the plastic surgery. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You see, this is Muhammad after he received the dish of wisdom. So how stupid Muhammad was before the surgery? Do, do you understand? Let us say you met you met a guy, and you know, before he come to let's say you are a female. And you are going to marry a guy. And this guy, he decided to be so smart, so you will love him more. And then he made a surgery, and the angels themselves, they did the surgery. They Jibril himself. I mean, this is the best doctor, man. Go to any hospital, ask for Jibril. Dr. Jibril. He's the best, always. You know? Actually, most of them, they are even the, the, the director of the hospital. I'm telling you. You know? Uh, by the way, Jibril is the same one who brings coffee, the same one who cleans the floor, the same one he's a surgeon, and the same one he is a nurse. He has multi multi personality in Islam. So Gabriel, he stuffed his chest with the throat and the throat and blood vessels. Look how deep this issue with wisdom. So if you take Muhammad blood vessels, you put it in the laboratory, they will not find like blood like us, they will find wisdom and faith. You know, like 50 50. So this guy now, he made a surgery and he is telling us this is stupid story after the surgery. So how stupid Muhammad was before the surgery? Are you getting my point? That he have a God who is hiding behind a veil and nobody can see him because there is a veil. That's mean the veil of which is between us and Allah is more strong than Allah because Allah glory can be hidden by a veil. It's not Allah changing his, let us say, his hampering himself so we will not get hurt. He himself is behind a veil. That means the veil is stronger than Allah and more powerful than it's, you know, uh, uh, the veil is Allah proof. Like we hear about vest, you know, I don't know if you have any of them. If you don't, I can give you some. Uh, you know, but not, not all of them, they are good, by the way. Some of them, they are like cheap and they are good, but don't try them. At, don't try this at home. Anyway, so anyway, so you shoot at the vest, and then the bullet will go through if the if the vest is cheap, you know, is this bad quality. So you lost your life. Allah, He is hiding Himself behind a veil, and this veil is bulletproof, is glory of Allah proof. Allah glory cannot go through. The veil is more strong than Allah. And if we ask ourselves, how Allah He can create a veil? Is the veil created by Allah? The automatic answer will be from the Muslim, yes. Everything is created by Allah. Now, not to forget to mention, the Quran says no. The Quran says that Allah is the best of the creators, remember? Allah is the best of the creators. So how Allah? I know what's wrong with this website, it's not working. So Allah is the best of the creators. But we will go with the Muslims. If Allah is the only creator, and He is the creator for everything, so who is the one who created the veil? The Muslim, they will say, Allah. Wonderful. Allah created a veil, can stop His glory from going through, and it can hide Him behind the veil, as if Allah is visible. Do you know what I mean? You see, why does God he need the veil if he is not visible anyway? I mean, who is the stupid here? You see, a woman, Muslim woman, she hide herself behind the veil because Muhammad, he made her a private part. She is just a walking vagina. But Allah is not visible anyway. So why he need a veil
Do you understand what I'm saying? And now if the Muslim, they say, he is invisible because of the veil, that means Allah is visible. Is that correct? Is Allah visible for the veil? Any Muslim can answer? Is Allah visible for the veil? So if you say to me now the veil is an object, cannot see, well then how Allah he see he say in the Quran that when the mountain saw the glim of the glorious Allah, the mountain destroyed, the mountain destroyed, he saw. The mountain he saw little of the glory of Allah, the mountain. So don't tell me the game of the veil cannot see, that is too late. You know, you need to fix your Prophet Muhammad's stories. His bedtime stories is too much. Hmm? And Islam is the true Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he shows himself, you will not be able to live. He's so powerful. And the example we have in the Quran in Surah Taha, then Musa alayhi salam says, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to see you. So Allah says, I will show my glimpse to the mountain. You look what happens to the mountain. See? So if you say to me that the veil will not be able to see Allah, that is very silly and stupid because as you see a mountain with solid rocks and dirt, saw the glimpse of Allah, the glory of Allah, and the mountain was destroyed. So here, when, when we see this story here, which is sponsored by the dish of faith and wisdom installed in the chest of Muhammad and his abandonment, you know, abandonment. I love the way I say it, don't you guys? By the way, I will open a special uh, uh, English class for those who their English is weak, you know. You teach me Arabic because most of them they claim I do not know Arabic and I teach you English. Kabich. And I will make another class for Indonesian. <coughs> As you know, I speak Indonesian very well, you know. Uh, just add a n at the end of any word like you see here it says behind if you want to speak indonesian just add n so it be become behind an you know veil vlan you know like uh, uh messenger you know messenger on okay so that is very easy you know like you know it's like in in french you know in french you add lu in the front of any word that's it you know lu muhammad lu prophet lu idiot Lou donkey, Lou crazy, Lou dish of wisdom, Lou potato, and Lou the rest. So it's very easy, and you know, uh, and this is what happened to me, by the way, after I ate the dish of Allah, which is full of faith and wisdom, brother. Okay, I learned all those tricks, and things become so easy and so uh, halal fun. So here we ask ourselves, how stupid Muhammad is when he tried to explain his God. And look, in the verse after it says, and thus we have inspired thee, Muhammad, a spirit of our command. Have you ever heard of a stupid statement like this? Read it, think about it, and tell me what you think. We inspired Muhammad a spirit. Have you ever heard of somebody inspired a spirit? He inspired Muhammad, a spirit. You see, I inspire you by revelation. I inspire you with ideas. I inspire you with thought, but I inspire you by a spirit. How that can work? Any Muslim can help us? Oh, I forgot the Muslims are busy now. They are ordering a wisdom dish and faith dish, you know? So, you know, they claim that the Quran is an amazing book, but this is a stupid inspired you spirit of our command. Was Allah inspiring Muhammad Quran or was or he was inspiring a spirit and how a spirit became the inspiration. Do even Muhammad know what inspiration mean? Are you getting my point, guys? Obviously, Muhammad do not know what inspiration mean.
one of you he sent me a message saying to me uh, but you know I said yesterday nobody saw the people of Gog and Magog which is a very funny story the guy he said to me I saw the Gog Magog I see him I see I, I met one of them so really he said yeah my mother-in-law she is very aggressive she's a bloody aggressive and she is uh, and not from this earth you know I said well you got a point there <laughs> so we cannot find the Gog and Magog but we can come we how we can receive an inspiration which is a spirit you receive inspiration or you receive a spirit Yeah, the guy he got me busted actually he got a point there you know and he said you said Gog and Magog nobody saw them we'll get married and you will see you will see them every day at least once a week I said okay well you got a point you know do we have any Muslim here uh, You see, like when Allah, we, we mentioned to you the story about Allah is in the tree, correct? And the Quran says, blessed is the one is inside the fire. So how this person, I mean, he's stealing a story from the Bible. Obviously, he did not know what God is about. You see, God of the Christians, he can. You cannot see God the way he is. That because of your limitation, not because he cannot. He can show himself, he will die, that's all. But the, the God of the Christians, he can appear as he wish. When Jesus, you know, he got baptized, a bird appeared in the sky. Bird, right? A voice came from the sky, says, this is my only begotten son. God himself, he came to this earth as a man. His name is the Messiah. The God of Islam, he have a problem. He is a collection of fiction stories and Muhammad trying to glue them together. He lived between the Jews. He started copying stories from the Jews. And now he's trying to make the Arabian God fit with the new God he learned about from the Jews. And now he do not know even what inspiration means. This guy, he think inspiration is a spirit. And that spirit, Muslim, they say Jibreel. But how Jibreel is a spirit? Is, he, is the angels a spirit in Islam? The Quran say no. If you go in the Quran, you will see. The Quran says that in the day of judgment, the angels and the spirits will stand in rank. So if the spirit is an angel, this verse is wrong. And look what the Muslim they do. They add things is not in the Quran as usual. Did you see it? Look, it says the day that the Ruh, Ruh is the spirit. Between two brackets, Jibreel. Why you are adding Jibreel? The verse does not say Jibreel. You change the translator. This is Hilali and Khan. Look, we just changed the translator. There's no Hebrew. The day in which the spirit and the angels. So if Jibreel is the spirit, then this verse is wrong. Is that correct? If the angels are a spirit, then there is no need to say the spirit and the angels because the spirit is an angel. So obviously the spirit is not an angel. Secondly, the funny Muhammad, he copied another statement from the Bible, which is the Holy Spirit. You ask the Muslim, what is the Holy Spirit? 
they will say to you, Jibreel, not a single verse in the Quran say so. Not a single verse. Chapter, and you will notice each time the word Holy Spirit mention is attached to Jesus. Chapter 287, it says we gave Moses this and that, and then we send Jesus, the son of Mary, or Isa, with a clear sign, and we supported him with the Holy Spirit. Was Muhammad supported by the Holy Spirit? Never. So here Muhammad is copying from the Christians, adding it to his Quran, and getting himself in, in trouble. Why Jesus is supported, why the Quran did not say, and we supported Muhammad by the Holy Spirit, exactly the word. If we go to different verse, the Muslim, they will say to you, no, it says there, but it doesn't say exactly the same. It says in chapter 16, verse number 102, that uh, uh, Allah, he sent it down by the Spirit, or the Holy Spirit. He sent down what? The Quran. But this is our problem. If Muhammad received an inspiration, and the one who appeared to him was an, uh, either a man, or either an angel have 600 wings, where is the Spirit? Guys, do you understand me? Where is the spirit? If God, he sent the spirit, and this spirit should not be then physical, because he called it spirit. Muhammad, he claimed that uh, he saw Gabriel twice. Uh, let me give you this link about Muhammad. He was stuffed in his throat and his... Uh, potato tomato is a stomach by wisdom this is the link you can save it you know uh, in case you need it in the future uh, let me see Okay. Let us see here. There's a point here I want to mention. If you remember, uh, in chapter forty, uh, chapter four, verse one seventy-one, it says that when Allah He sent, uh, He speak about uh, Isa, supposedly the Messiah. In chapter four, verse one seventy-one, He said that Isa is a spirit from Him. Let me open the verse. And here you will see how confused, how stupid Muhammad is. The angel, according to the Muslims, and according to Muhammad, is a spirit. No problem. But Muhammad, not a single once, single, just a sing, single time in the Quran, it says that this angel, Jibreel, is a spirit. The Muslim, they, they, they try to make a conclusion out of many verses. And then he says, you see, it says the one who sent the Quran down is a spirit. But why Allah saying in spirit if it's an angel? Why he don't say an angel? Why didn't he say Jibreel? Then he continue here in chapter 4, verse 171 says that the Messiah is the word of God. 
and he is a spirit proceeding from him. Muslims, is the Messiah a spirit? Or he is a man? Do you see how confused those people are? You see, a spirit is different from soul. Soul. Soul is, uh, let us say, you know, when the Quran speak about spirit, we see that the Quran says the Holy Spirit. But there's nothing called the Holy Soul. Are you getting my point? Soul is given to a creature to live. Spirit is not soul. So what is a spirit then? And how Jesus, he is a man. The verse saying clearly he is a man. The verse saying he is the word of God. So we ask the Muslim, is the word of God created? They will say no. So Jesus is the word of God. He's not created. And he was in heaven before he came down to earth. In the top of that, he is a spirit. Well, he's a man or he is a spirit now? Is he a physical man or he is a spirit? How Jesus is a word and a spirit in the same time. And how he is a man and a word and a spirit in the same time. And the funny is, the same verse says, don't say Trinity. This is the same verse speaking as a Trinity. It's the same verse saying, you, cannot be, you can be three and one in the same time. And the only one can do that is Jesus. Look. He is a man. Jesus is a man. He's a messenger. He's a man. He's a son of Mary, a human. And then this human is a messenger. So he's a flesh, he's a man. And he's a word at the same time. At the same time, he's a spirit proceeding from God. Not only he is a spirit, he is a spirit connected to God. And here you see Muhammad is making more madness in his teaching. Well, this is why I'm asking the Muslims if Jesus is a human, he keeps saying to us he's a human. Is is Adam is a spirit? Muslims? Is Adam is a spirit? They will say no. Okay. Is uh Moses a spirit? No. Well, is Jesus a spirit? Yes, he is. So how Jesus is a spirit, yet he is a man. And you see, uh, again, again, Muhammad, he is confused. He's trying to steal something from the Christians. In the same time, he's trying to refute the Christians. He hijacked the names. He hijacked the title. And now he is trying to fight Christianity by saying stupid things. But in the same statement, he just admitted that Jesus is everything. He is the word. And this is exactly what the chapter, uh, the book of John, chapter 1, verse number 1 says, In the beginning, it was the word. And this word, which was with God, sent down. And this is what the Quran is saying here. And he is his word. He is not the word. He is his word. He is. And the Bible says, and the word was God. And then in verse number 14, it says, and the word become what? A flesh. So the, the dummy Muhammad, he learned that Christ is a word of God. He is supported by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, not just a spirit. Here Muhammad, he added more description to Jesus, saying he is a spirit himself. There's a huge difference between you have a soul and you are a spirit. Do we have any Muslim have any comment? Gabriel, he was seen by Muhammad as a person who have 600 wings, once or twice.
Do you see it? Do we have any Muslim to answer any of what we just said today? So as you see, everything in this religion is stupid. This God is a glorious, you cannot see him. Why? Because he is behind the veil. That means the veil is stronger than Allah. Who is the one who made the veil? Allah. But how something is made by Allah is stronger than Allah. The Muslim, they keep saying to you that the Christian prince is trying to stop the light of Allah. Correct? Well, as you see, Allah, he stopped his light himself. A veil can stop the light of Allah. This is a verse they keep reciting in order to run away from any debate. They desire to put out the light of Allah with their mouths, and Allah will not consist save to perfect His light. But as you see, Allah Himself, He put a veil and His light is not coming. And where is the light of Allah so we can see it? Any Muslim can tell me. And how somebody can put the light of Allah by his mouth? This remind me of other stupid story of Muhammad about the guy go who burned, who tried to burn Abraham. By the way, did you see that guy go, which I found in my yard? How many of you saw that guy go? I was really shocked. I was terrified actually. I mean, this guy go is not even in the size of my fingertip. But to be honest with you, it's scary. How many of you saw the, the guy go? Some Muslims, they are saying that I paid this guy go to make a movie. But as you see, be my witness, the actor, he ran away. I did not pay him. He got scared from the camera. I mean, this is a God. He is afraid of a guy go. This is a God. He have a phobia with garlic. He have phobia with onion. He have a phobia with leek. He have a phobia from pork. He have a you know he will he cannot come to house. You know, Muhammad he stopped receiving Quran because there's a little puppy dead under the bed of Muhammad. And then they say to us they try to stop the light of Allah by their mouth. I mean, if this God could not deliver the message to Muhammad because of a puppy, a puppy. Ask yourself, how in the world? That there is a God, He is Almighty. He now He want to send the message to His prophet. His prophet is inside the house. Inside the house, there is a dead dog. The dead dog is under the bed of Muhammad. And now the angels of Allah, they cannot get in. Why? Because there is a dog. And here you ask yourself, why Muhammad even have a dog at home? If he knew that this will stop the angels, and what kind of angels they fear with the dogs? And what will happen if the angel get in and the dog is inside? He will bite him. So one hand they say that the angel is a spirit. The other hand they say he is so powerful. The other hand they say angel can destroy a, a, an army. And the other hand we find that the, an angel, he can't get inside the house of a dog. Anyone remember the hadith? Muhammad trying to make excuse why he is not receiving Quran. What is the excuse? A dog, a puppy. It's not even a dog, it's a puppy. It's little puppy. Gabriel made a promise with the messenger of Allah to come to him in a certain hour. Hey Muhammad, tomorrow we have a date, okay? Tomorrow six o'clock I will be at home. Six o'clock came, seven o'clock came, 
second day came third day came angel is not coming what the heck is that and then the messenger he found a dead dog under his bed there was a staff in the hand of the messenger of Allah he threw it from his hand and said never does Allah back out of his promise have you ever heard of a God he back out because of a dog what happened to the Almighty God so this God he made a promise I will send you Quran tomorrow at six o'clock be there okay Muhammad is waiting Muhammad is walking backward forward backward forward like a yo-yo the yo-yo Muhammad and the promise of God is broken why because there is a dog then the angel came to him finally after some time after Muhammad he noticed that there's a dog, dead dog under the bed he said Aisha when did this dog enter she said by Allah I do not know imagine they swear by Allah over a puppy do you see how much they respect their God by Allah I do not know obviously Aisha she was playing with the dog she's a child then he commanded that it should be turned uh, turned out actually that the dog is dead no sooner than had they expelled Jibril came come here I mean Jibril was waiting man the second the dog is thrown out of the house Jibril in the house <laughs> and Muhammad he told uh, Jibril told Muhammad angels cannot enter a house have images or dogs or a person who did masturbate <laughs> or sex he have sex but he did not wash <laughs> look at this Muhammad he said to read you promised me and I waited for you but you did not come whereupon he said it was a dog it was a dog in your house which prevented me to come for we angels do not enter houses which there is a dog or a picture and Zachary Naik is waiting for the angel to come to him how many pictures you have in your phone in your house what about the dog is in the city I mean if the dog will stop the angels from coming into a house how he can enter a city Remember the angel of Jibreel, he covered the horizon, he's so big, so what house is for him? If he cannot get into a house because of a dog, that means he cannot enter to town because of a dog. What a stupid religion. And yet they say to you, they try to stop the light of Allah by their mouth. When the dog, he stopped the Quran from coming. And then Muhammad, he ordered to kill all the dogs. Look at this man, madness, look. Oh, Lord have mercy. Do we have any Muslim? You know what, I got an idea. This guy, he told me about his mother-in-law. I mean, what about you, you, you try to convince her to become an angel? And then you get a puppy. And then you will never see her again in your house. Just tell your, you know, com you know convince your mother-in-law that she's an angel. After she is convinced that she's an angel, give her a name. Give her Jibreel, Tabriel, whatever name you want. And then get a dog, a puppy. And now your mother-in-law, she can't enter the house. Problem is solved. A dog, he stopped an angel of God. Hmm? Any Abdul? Yeah, hit, hit the like bomb. If you hit the like bomb, if you don't hit the like bomb, Allah will hit you with the, with the dog. Okay? I'm telling you, I'm warning you. 
hit the like button otherwise Allah will hit you with the uh, you know and this religion by the way is confused about who is angel in one hand they say the angel is a spirit when they want in one hand they say that the angel is thunder do you know that in the, the thunder is an angel chapter 13 verse number 13 says that Mr. Rad which is a thunder is an angel look read with me this is the chapter of thunder I mean, you know, you, you enter National Geography when you go to the Quran. Thunder, spider, cave, chair, you know, elephant, you name it, you know, cow, whatever. It's a zoo. So now, Mr. Thunder, right? You go here, chapter, verse number 13. Now, we can say that everything, you glorify God. No problem. I have no problem with it. But this is not how the Muslims, they understand it. The most time they understand this, that Thunder is a real angel. His name is Rad, which is a Thunder in Arabic. And he has 70,000 angels in the right side of his hand. Another 70 in the, his left hand. So they asked the Prophet, and what about his fire belt? Uh, what, what is uh, the Thunder? He sees it an angel. And they said to him, well, what is that sound we hear? He said, when he moved his hand to the right side, 70,000 angels, they scream, praising Allah. When he moved his left hand, another 70,000, they scream, praising Allah. And they said to him, so what about the fire we see? He said, this is a fire built. He, build, he beat the cloud with it. I mean, this is convincing, by the way. You know? You know, ask yourself how the cloud is coming from place to place. Obviously, he is beating the cloud with the belt. And he moved it from place to place. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, makes sense. That's not the poo-poo. You know, it's true. Me, myself, I used to work as an angel for like part-time. You know, I was looking for a job. And then I said, Allah, can you give me a job or something, you know? He said, what kind of job you like? I said, you know, something uh, is easy to do. And you do not need to be smart or intelligent. He said, that perfect, angel. I said, but angels, they are smart. He said, no, no, I'm talking about Muslim angels. I said, oh, okay. You get a point there. You know, all right. Very easy. You do not need to think. He's a delivery boy. So look at this. Here. Uh, <clears throat> oh, look in here. They, they took it off. I mean, it's not there, really. We have to go to different... Where is the angels? Where is the 70,000? What the heck is that? What? Uh, and look, by the way, nobody knows what the, what the, what the female carry, if it's an, uh, a male or female, except Allah. And now we can get a picture of the baby gender in, in five minutes, if, if not two minutes. So look at this here. Let's go to this one. This, one. this is the official government website of the kingdom of uh, Jordan. It's a kingdom. <laughs> I mean, this guy, he think really is a king. <laughs> Thanks to America and to Israel who paid his salary. So anyway, uh, here it says, the thunder, Hemeth, am I saying it correctly? Hemeth? Hemeth. He prays by his command. It's an angel. It's also said, it is the voice of the sky. And so do the angels. And also the angel him in the praise in him. And for a we him, the angels are we toward Allah. Mm. Uh, let's see different. Uh, the thunder and the thunder is an angel who is in charge of the cloud, driving them while he constantly proclaiming his praise and that he says a glory to Allah in Arabic by the way so you see when you hear the thunder the thunder is speaking in Arabic and he is praising Allah and he is an angel and now you know the Muslim they will say it doesn't say that CP Christian Prince is lying for you this is your this is your website this is the Yusuf Ajalain your top scholar and this is your website, Royal of Ahlul Bayt Institute, Islamic Thought, Amman, Jordan. Government website, King, the King website, the scumbag himself. 
So what is the conclusion now? The conclusion that there is zero, zero Muslim can answer us. Or what they can do, they can call names, they can threat, they can uh, flag our videos, but they cannot answer us. And the result of that, people leave us now. As simple as that. Like the story of Gog and Magog, it's a priceless. I like it. You know? The story of the cave, the story of the seven sleepers, the story, all the stories of Muhammad. This per person is mentally ill. And the Jews, they keep making fun of him. They say things to him, he take it. They, they come to him, they say, tell us about the prophet, his name Alexander the Great, or Zulkarnain. The stupid Muhammad, he took the trap. He believed them. He said, now they are waiting for me to tell them about this prophet. But the, the Jews don't believe in him as a prophet. They are making fun of you, you idiot. You know, sometimes like Muslims, they call me and they claim to be ex-Christians. So I say to them, give me the, the, okay, give me any statement from the book, from the Bible of Nicholas or the Bible of Santa Claus. Uh, the Bible of, uh, 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 you know, give me some, any phrase, anything, it's mentioned in the, in the book of the Bible of Washington, Washington, D.C. And then the Muslim, he starts like thinking, okay, Washington, D.C., I think there Jesus, he said, uh, yeah, like, you know, yeah, you know the thing, you know. And then supposedly he's an ex-Christian. And he is looking now, he's trying to quote for me a verse from Washington, D.C., you know, from the Bible of Washington, D.C., so this is how we get them busted. They are a bunch of liars. And when we say to them, or we see somebody leaving Islam live in our channel, the Muslim, they say, hey, he's paid, he pay him, he pay him, he pay him. He did not leave Islam, really. This is not the Muslim. We move on to the next of the major signs. We're dealing with the crisis of people leaving our faith, our own children, our own young men and women. And of the reasons why is that we are not answering some of these issues that they bring and we dismiss them. And I myself have discussed many of these issues with these types of people. And one of them, not the only one, but one of them is Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So we have. Brother, did he say one of them? How many pupu your prophet he did? I mean, your prophet, he is a pupu, walking pupu machine. One of them? The Muslims, our children, they are leaving Islam because of many, many tales. Did he say tales? Guys, do you know what tales mean? Did this guy, he said tales. Do you know what he implied by saying tales? You see, there's a huge difference between history and tale. Do we agree? Look, we have Abraham Musa saying, do the disbeliever not understand that God who created the heaven and the earth and do not tire is in doing it? I mean, this is, a, this is an, an average Muslim answer for nothing. First of all, Mr. Abraham Musa, I mean, did you, do you want to add the, why you don't add the 124,000 prophet to your list to make it your name? As long you are saying to us, why does this believer don't understand the creator of the heaven? Well, what is the proof that your God can create anything? As you see, your God could not deliver Quran just because there's a puppy in the house of Muhammad. How this person can be the creator of the heaven and the earth and he's powerful? When a puppy entered the bed of your prophet, prevented Allah from delivering Quran. Have you ever heard of a religion stopped coming because of a dog? <laughs> I mean, is that normal? How powerful your God is? You see, Jesus, he cast demon. The second they see him, they go, you know, like, they are terrified. You know, he cast them away. When you're God, he sent his more... Look, let, let me show you a different story. 
the God of Muhammad, he decided to take the life of Musa. Okay, fair enough. God, he take life. No problem. He created you. He take your life. Okay. <laughs> so Allah, he decided to take the life of Musa. And the Muslim, they say, that Allah is Almighty God. And if He decides something, nobody can stop it. Nobody can stop it. Read with me, Allah. And this is, you see, when, when this guy, uh, uh, Yasser Qadi, and, uh, holds a narrative, he says those things, he says many stories, not only this is a tale, many tales, because of many tales, they are living Islam. They didn't read. So there's God, he decided to take the life of Moses. Abu Huraira, the father of the cat, reported that the angel of death was sent to Moses uh, to inform of his Lord summons. When he came, he, Moses boxed him and his eye was knocked out. He, the angel of death, came back to his Lord and he said, you sent me to a servant who do not want to die. Allah restored his eye. This is the story of Muhammad. How the Muslim, they say that your God, Allah, if he wants something to happen, he say be. How they say that it is destiny written before you are created, how long you will live. And how he sent the angel of death to take the life of Musa, and then the angel of death was beaten by a Jewish guy who did not have a black belt. Do you have a proof, first of all, that Musa, let us be serious here. Do you have any proof that Musa, he played karate? Guys, do you think, do you think that Musa was a, was a Chinese? I'm suspecting he's Chinese. I mean, look, Moshi, uh, so, you know, Bruce Lee, you know, like very close. Moshi, you know, Bruce Lee, you know, Lee. I think his real name was like Moshi Lee. I mean, the angel of death is coming to you and he have an order from the powerful, the almighty God. And then we have a prophet who is obedient to God. And then what the prophet who is obedient to God, he do? Ching mo And not only he did beat him, he knocked his eyes out. But do you remember the Muslim, they say that the angel is a spirit? How you can knock an angel spirit eye out? Is an angel or his spirit? Yeah, yeah, like his name. I think that the Jews, you know, they corrupted that uh, that Torah brother, and they changed his name. His real name. Uh, he's a Chinese, you know. He's Chinese, Mushli, Mushli, Mussolini, something like this, you know. But it's not Moshe as the Jewish they say. They changed the name for sure because he's very good in karate, you know. Uh, the, he, he did not even beat him. I mean, this guy, you know, and the angel, he did not even, they could not even fight back. You can imagine, I, don't, I wish I was there, you know. Actually, I was there, but I was busy, uh, you know. I was trying to find the dog uh, under the bed because I was waiting for pizza delivery from the same different angel, and I know that they will not enter the house unless there's no dogs. So I was trying to find the, and this story happened when Yuri I was busy, you know. So, the angel he came and he wanna now take the life of Musa. And now Musa he you know and look the angel he went back to Allah and his eye is coming out from his head like a rasul. Boing 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 boing. And then Allah he restored the eye. And then Yasir Qadi he says that our children they are leaving Islam because of the tales. Because of a tales, or because your prophet, he have a tale. Because of these types of tales, and we have to be honest and frank, and not pretend as if this doesn't exist. Perhaps some of you are not accustomed to hearing people speak. The issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is actually for our modern times. I would say one of the most. If I mean, the guy he did not even stop. He, he just started. He started touching his nose all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is that, man? What happened to your nose? Do you know that Muhammad, he said that shaitan sleep in your nose? 
and they are talking about tales will make Muslim leave Islam? Have you ever heard of a powerful shaitan sleep in the nose, pee in the ears, and jump inside your mouth when you do yawning? And this guy talking about there's many youth are leaving Islam because of tales. Can you give us more details? If not the most problematic of the signs of Judgment Day. And it has caused many of our youth to question, to doubt. I myself have met people that have actually left Islam. Actually, I think this is you. This guy he was speaking about himself when he looked at the mirror. Because later in the video, he agreed that he don't believe in those stories. He don't believe in Gog and Magog no more. He don't believe that they are coming from the earth. He don't believe that they are behind the dam. He don't believe the Quran saying that. This guy became an apostate. By the way, you know, I just to let you know, we Middle Eastern, we are very aggressive. Look at what happened. Look what my cousin Moshe, he did. You know what will happen to you if you meet me. I'm just letting you know, you know, in case you are thinking about it. Okay? I mean, my cousin Moshe, peace be upon him, when the angel came to him, he did not show mercy. I mean, he just, you know? And maybe I don't have the skills like Moshe, but I assure you, I have, like, let us say, different level of training. I learned that some training from my cousin al Kazafi. I have some training from my cousin, other cousin, uh, Saddam Hussein, peace be upon him. I have, uh, all of them, they are very peaceful people, by the way. Very friendly, peaceful people, very wonderful people. And by the way, Middle East is heaven. Not like those American and uh, Europe and crazy stuff, you know, kuffar, najis, dirty, disgusting, you know. Go, go to our land, brother. It's very beautiful, very beautiful, you know. Like, you know, it's uh, very peaceful and that's why, and very safe. That's why we have bars all over the windows mm. and all the doors is made from steel because it's very peace there very safe very safe and women she cannot walk on the street because it's safe brother very very safe you know she's secure yeah she need a guardian not because it's not safe no no not because people they will kidnap her no but you know she need a guardian because she feel like she need a bodyguard because she's important women are important in the middle east they are guarded, brother. Uh, so, uh, Muslims, this is a story. This is a prophet of God. And what's the point of this story? And now, and look what, what God, he said to him. He said to the angel, okay, go back, go back. I mean, if I am the angel, I will not go back. I mean, the guy, he just took my eye off. So, he told him, go back. And tell him to place his hand in the top of a of a ox or a cow. And whatever hair his hand cover, he will live. You know what? What make me upset? Why Allah did not say, put your hand over a hair of a cat, and whatever your hand cover, you live. Which means each hair is one ear. Man, that would be good. You know what I would do? I will shave all the hair of the cat and put it in my hand. No, Allah knows. He does not know. You know. I mean, look at this silly, you know, put your hand over a cow so you can change the day you will die because you did beat an angel of God, disobeying God. Disobe Show more disrespect. Imagine, guys, this is story to us that God, he sent an angel and then there's a guy, he beat the messenger of God. How in the world this person is, an, is, is, a, is a prophet of God and he's obedient to God? Imagine Allah, he sent Jibreel to Muhammad. Muhammad, he beat Jibreel. I mean, what different? There's no different. Anyway, I'm sure many of you now are going to like Islam very much. Actually, today I met a person. He did not know who I am, you know. And he started telling me, uh, he's a nice guy. And uh, he said, uh, he said, you have an accent. You know, he just, you know, met. 
you have an accent, you know, and yeah, like, you know, we're talking about. And then he says, you know, I speak, in the beginning he thought maybe I'm a Muslim, something like that. But then I, he said, are you, uh, just, uh, no, I'm Christian. You know, everything he said, almost wrong, you know, almost. He's a good guy, but he does not know much. Uh, and he said, uh, 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 you know, if you have any question about this uh, uh, religion, I ask me, I will help you. I said, well, I'm learning, just tell me more, I'm listening. <laughs> And then he said to me, you know, Islam is an Abrahamic, but they are wrong. You know, they are not really, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a cult, uh, but they are Abrahamic. I said, why they are Abrahamic? How you know they are Abrahamic? He said, oh, the uh, Abraham is in the Quran. I said, is Jehovah's Witnesses Abrahamic? He said, what? I said, is Jehovah's Witnesses Abrahamic? He said, no. I said, is... Mormon Abrahamic? They said no. So they have Abraham too. Anyway, this guy you have no idea he's talking to who. Yeah, and later, like the five minutes after he shut up and he decided to listen, and he noticed that he have no idea he is speaking about what. Uh, and then uh, his wife she came and she need to leave, and he don't want to leave actually. He want to stay and he want to learn more. And he said, by the way. You said to me, I'm learning from you, I'm listening. You were making a mockery of me, weren't you? <laughs> like when he's leaving, he said, by the way, did you say like to me when I was talking to you in the beginning, uh, I'm listening, I'm learning. Yeah, continue, yeah, I'm learning, you know? So you were making mockery of me all this time. And you know, I was, you know, I said, no, but I'm trying to understand how, what, you, what do you know? So I can correct you. I'm not making a mockery. I'm just trying to see what you know. You said you know a lot. So what I will say to you without knowing what you know, I will say you do not know anything. So I have to learn, listen to you. And uh, I did not lie to you. I'm saying I'm learning. I'm learning about you. You know, I'm learning about what you know. They said you are right, you know. But, uh, and, uh, you know, and you speak Arabic, right? I said, uh, yeah. He said, say, he said to me then, I'm learning too. <laughs> Yeah, he was teaching me. Uh, are you the same man on spread? Spread become gods. Your name Faisal Ashar. Are you the one who's in spread become God? Hey, my friend, I am the Shin who become the Shin God. Have you ever heard of a God is a Shin? What's wrong with you, Muslim? You're, you don't accept Jesus because he's a man. You accept God because he's a shin? How does shin become a god? Is it a holy shin? I mean, just to change one letter at the end, you would have an unpleasant name. You know what I mean? Uh... Yeah, I mean, this religion is very funny, it's very silly. In one hand, they say to you, God cannot be inside as a creation, and then he is inside the shin, and then he come down to the earth, and then he come down inside the heaven, and then he go down to the lowest heaven, and then he go inside the tree, and then he go inside the fire, and then all of this, Allah, uh, don't enter inside as a creation. <clears throat> Do we have any Muhammadan want to say something useful? Beside uh, Musa's, he did, uh, you know. And you know, Muhammad, he have tons of tales, by the way. Like uh, the story of Musa's testicles. This is my favorite story. Because, you know, like once upon the time, I was living in a village and I was very shy. And I don't take a shower in front of people. I'm very shy by nature. You know, as you see, I don't open a camera uh, because I don't want anyone to see any of those things, you know. So anyway, and then... The, some um, bad people, they start making rumors that he have a problem there, here, you know. I'm not going to say where, you know. So, uh, uh, Allah, he heard them because Allah, he can hear the gossip. Allah hear all gossip, you know. He cannot hide it from Allah. So, Allah hear the gossip and then Allah wanted to prove to them that my testicles are wonderful. 
So what Allah he did, very tricky guy, man. Allah is very tricky, man. I don't know what to do with him. And now I cannot even take a shower since then. So I went to take a shower in a private secluded area. I took my clothes off and I put it in a rock in the front of the beach in the Himalaya River, you know, next to Venezuela. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, you are in Africa now, you know, Venezuela. And then uh, I put my rock, you know, my clothes in the rock. And then uh, when I put the clothes in the rock, the rock start running. And Allah, he exposed the private part, uh, my private part. Look at this. Abu Huraira reported that Musa was a modest person who was never seen naked. And Banu Israel, the children of Israel, said, he's afraid to expose his private part because he have a sexual disease, Allahu Alam, you know, and he is uh, having obviously a scortal hernia, hernia, hernia. Yeah, hernia is like the cousin or Har uh, Harun, uh, yeah, Harun Yahya. Yeah. And then one day, brother, he took a bath in the water. He took a bath in the water. Look like at that time people they take a bath in the water, and some people take bath with urine. Uh, and then uh, and place his garment upon the stone, brother. The stone began to move quickly. And he followed the stone and he struck it. Wait, what? Wait, what? What happened? And somebody ate the story. Hear the story. This is not the whole story. Look, here the story is better. And the stone decided to move. Look, what the heck? This is the story here is better. Hold on. The order they are staying, the stone start moving. The stars, stones start running. What moving? Okay. Look here, look, look. Okay. And when he had finished his bath, he moved toward his clothes as it to take them. And the stone took the clothes and fled. I love this part. I mean, this is how action movies should be. So the guy now, he took a bath, you know, which is something normal you do. And you know, you shampoo. Shampoo, not shampoo, you know, in Arab, you know, Middle Eastern, we say shampoo. So shampoo, uh, halibu, you know, whatever stuff, you know, put it in your head, etc., to clean yourself. And then now he's done. So he want to go to his uh, clothes, which he put it in the top of the rock, his eye wallet, iPhone, all, all stuff. And then the rock, look, look, the rock, the stone took his clothes and fled. And Moses has picked up his stick. And run after it. Look, look, Moses, see, he's naked now. But he will never leave his stick behind. Period. I mean, now you are naked. And now Moses is worried about this, uh, about the stick, magical stick. You remember, this is a stick. He can do things with it. You know, a lot of stuff. So Moses will not leave this stick. You know, even he's naked now. So he took the stick, brother. And he, but look, Moses, the story, Muhammad did not mention like Moses, he was astonished or like, as if nothing happened. He just saw the rock is running with his clothes. He chased the rock and he started saying to the rock, stop, rock, my clothes, stop, rock, my clothes. It looked like at that time, rocks, they used to do theft. Because if you read the story here, and he kept chasing the rock, screaming, saying, my garment, oh stone, give me my garment. You know, at that time, they, they speak to stones, you know. And Musa is not astonished how the stone is running. Normal at that time, they, they, they run all the time. They steal clothes, they steal bread. You know, I have a, I have a cousin, a, a, the stone stole his chicken, you know. She took the chicken and the chicken is stopped in the top of the stone. It was a rooster, actually. In the rooster, they like to be high. So he jumped in the rock. And the second he jumped in the rock, the rock start running. And now the rooster, he don't dare to jump because it's so fast. And it's very dangerous. He don't have a seat belt. So, you know, and he don't have a parachute. So, you know, like, you know, the stone is running. And uh, my cousin running after the stone. And my cousin, he did not surprise how in the world the stone is running. Because it's normal. Look, look. Moses, he did not like say, what the heck? Stone is running? No, he did not think about it because normal things happen, you know, at that time, normal. And so he keep running after the stone 
He pick up his, his, his stick and he run after the stone saying, Oh stone, give me my garment. Because the stones, they speak and they talk and they are uh, like us. You know, you can talk to them. And by the way, he's, this is a Hebrew stone. Okay. This is a, this is a Jewish stone to make it simple. You know, that's why it's, it's you know, stealing. If it's a Muslim stone, we we'll never steal, brother. Muslims steal only from non-Muslims. Okay. And then here, uh, oh stone, give me my garment. Till they reach a group of Bani Israel who saw him naked and they found that he have the best private part Allah created. You should see the women, man. The women, they look at Moses. Oh boy, what the heck is that? What Moses he have there? Is that a scarred muscle? Is that a herposcanic muscles? What, what the heck is that? And then all the Muslims, all the Jews, they agree. This is the best penis Allah ever created. And you should see like Moses, he is so proud now. Looking down at between his legs. Yeah, look, yeah, see? See? Finally, Allah prove it to you. Look how beautiful it is. Look at this. And then Moses, he grabbed his sunglasses and he put it over his private part because he's, uh, you know, because it's sensitive. He never saw the sun before, you know. You don't want to blind your private part. So, uh, they saw how beautiful it is. And then Allah, he cleared him from their accusation. So now look at the plan. The, the people accuse him that his private part have a problem. Allah, he thought about it. How in the world I'm going to clear his penis? So he made the stone run, brother. The stone run until when to down, down to Jerusalem. Okay? Downtown Jerusalem, there is a Jack Shalom, there is a, a Netanyahu, Bibi, uh, 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 you know, all, all of them, all the guys, you know, the IDF army. I mean, they're everybody. And then Moses is like, wait, wait, what the heck, oh, that, you know, suddenly he did not notice that he is in the middle of the town now because he's so, you know, he, he cannot lose his wallet. Here's a credit card, here's, I mean, everything, you name it. Uh, uh, so when he went there and everybody, he saw that his private part is so beautiful and so like, uh, mashallah, you know, uh, Amar Rabbi Amar, uh, they, uh, the stone stop in a perfect location in the middle of the square, you know, in uh, Travelker Square in London. So like, you know, uh, everybody saw it. Everybody praised Allah, how beautiful it is. And then uh, uh, Moses, he will now seek revenge. So he start beating the stone. Look, 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 look. And then he took his garment and started hitting the stone with his stick. And then Muhammad, he swear by Allah, the stone still have some traces of the hitting three. Three? What three? He hit it three times? What the heck? This guy is a Trinity guy? Why three times? Every Islam is three times. And then you will see the poor Yasser Qadi saying, our youth are leaving Islam because of such tales. Why they are leaving Islam? Because of these types of tales. The issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is actually, for our modern times, I would say, one of the most, if not the most problematic of the signs of Judgment Day. And it has caused many of our youth to question to doubt I myself have met people that have actually left Islam because of these types of tales yeah. did this guy he just say the truth that he's a prophet is a, t is a fairy tale storyteller and he is a he, he, you know he's a fraud and a banana this is comedy because I hate it when somebody disrespect that the words of Prophet Muhammad. I hate it. What comedy? This is a true story. Show respect, my friend. Do you want this to happen to you? Okay. Let us say your mother-in-law she accused you that your penis is like uh, bent. You know, it's bended. Like you know, somebody closed the door in it, and it's like bent, like letter T. Do you want uh, rumors to uh, speak about it like this in the society? 
do you want Joe Biden, you, you know, go on TV? And he say, you know, we have to bend his, uh, you know, the thing. You don't want the, you know, the thing. So don't make fun of the, you know, because those things can happen to you. You know, things happen. This is a true story. Uh, you know, if we don't have witnesses, but we have the rock. And the rock still have it, the traces there. Look, look. You see? The race that, that, uh, that uh, the you know, I, I can take you there. I can take you. Just hold on. And it says here, and by Allah, look, this, this is serious. He's swearing. When Muhammad, he swear, it's mean the poopoo is big. By Allah, I think when Muhammad was talking, he looked at the eyes of people and they were saying, like, what the heck this guy is saying? So he have to swear now to make them believe. So he said, by Allah, by Allah, by Allah, the stone still has some traces of the hitting three four or five marks look oh muhammad look at look at the decency muhammad is not sure he's sure from the whole story but how many times he hit it he's not sure three four five honesty 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 i mean muhammad he is a dripping truthful and honesty decency I'm not like, you know, I mean, the whole story is correct. But at the end, I'm not sure, to be honest with you, if it is he hit it a three or four or five. I'm not sure. Hey, Muhammad, how come? How come you say it's by swear by Allah? It has a traces, and now you don't remember how many. So come on. You know, like uh, if you make fun of somebody, you know, you, you, you do you know that Allah will punish you? I, I, I will tell you a true story. Once there is a guy, you know, he made fun of me because of my look. Do you know what happened to him? Second day, Allah, he made him woke up in the morning. He went to the mirror. He found himself look like me. The guy, he was saying, no, please, no, no way. Unbelievable. You know, unbelievable, man. Don't do that. And a banana? Do you want Allah to make you wake up in the morning you find yourself like a banana? Don't do that, man. I mean, come on. Your name is already in a banana. I mean, that's messed up. <laughs> make it in a zucchini, you know? Uh, <laughs> hey, Muslims, is that your prophet, the truthful? That And this is Sahih Bukhari, by the way. This is a true story, Sahih Bukhari, look. And look, just to make it more clear, the proof that this story is true, look at the number. Three, four, zero, four, music, music. Look, look. If it's different number, by the way, I might say the story not convincing. But when you look at such a number, three, four, zero, four, what a music. It's like harmony. It's like magical. Three, four, zero, four so beautiful so beautiful and who can say that Muhammad is a liar nobody does the stone have engine or wheel my friend first of all this is a stone from Israel and everybody knows that Israeli stuff is different from different stuff just face it I will convince you in better way. The Israeli, they have no weapon work by laser. Do laser have engine and wheels? Uh, I got you busted. Hey, 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 hey. See? Uh, hello, we answer you. And now we are refuted. And bingo. Don't ever try. Laser is not better than stones. So in Israel, everything is possible because those are Jews. I mean, we are talking about the Jews. Come on. You are not talking about the Arab. In the Arab, even the car will not work. With gas and engine and, you know, because they, you know, I mean, very good in everything. Do we have any Muslim have any comment? Man, you go in the Middle East, you will see a lot of hitting is the mark of sticks and stones. Because remember, those stories happen to all the Jewish prophets. All of them. 
the Jewish accused him that they have a bad private part. Uh, he Faisal. Okay. Yes, and devil. <laughs> You know, the funny about the Muslims, you show them all the poopoos they have in their garbage. And then they say to you, okay, let me post for you a verse. But what does this verse have to do with our topic? Let us say for the sake of argument, there is something there you don't like. Is that how you refute your stupid prophet and lies? Hmm? And actually, the verses you are quoting for us showing us how truthful the, the Jewish are because they speak against themselves. If the Jewish are corrupt in their book, why the Jewish they will say that God, he is very angry from them, themselves? Muslims, I feel sorry for you. The stone is running and you cannot run. <laughs> Do we have any smart Muslim he can answer any of those things we said? Anything. Choose anything. And the funny, by the way, Asula, your prophet, he put his hand on the Torah and the book of the Jews, and he said, I swear by thee and the one who sent thee, and I believe in thee. I don't know. Anyway, and even even the questions the Muslims they raise, it is silly and it's stupid, and it doesn't even make sense. Hmm? You know when Muslim they try to uh, suppose they will find contradiction, will God against you because you are wrong? And Satan against you when you are right. <laughs> Isn't it your Quran says that Allah He sent Shaitan against His prophets? And isn't it your God He said that Allah is against the disbelievers? Let me show you your stupid Quran. Do you want to call me Fasula so we can laugh? Do you like to call me? I will use the same verses from the guy from the Bible you showed me and I will use your Quran and I will make you read it and everybody will laugh at you is it true your God he is angry from the Jews and he cursed them and is it true that Shaitan he will stand against everyone because Allah deceived them is it true that even Allah he sent shaitan against his prophets? Let us show you. To show you who you stupid, you know, those verses you are quoting, they have a good interpretation. Read and love. Why Allah want to send Satan's against his prophets? You see, it's not Satan coming against the prophets. It is Allah. He sends Satan against his prophet. All those, all those verses speaking about Satan, supposedly Satan is a bad person, right? So how he is a bad person and yet he is working for Allah? Read and love. Is that your book? And now Faisal, he will play dead. Is it true that Allah, he sent Satan's against his prophets? Are you there, Faisal, or you want me to block you? Don't make me talk to myself. Do you want to call me? 
do you dare to call me? This is your God, and Satan is his employee. So while Islam says that Satan, he whisper to the disbelievers so they will disbelieve. And then we find that Allah himself is sending Satan to be the enemy of his prophets. Why? Any Muslim can't tell me why Allah sending Shaitan against his prophet. He is sending Shaitan. And then we go to different verse in the Quran. We will find this. The Quran says that Allah said to Shaitan, You have no authority over my good servants, and no one except Al Gawin, which is the criminals, the bad one. And then we find Allah is the one who sent shaitan against his prophet. And they fail. Isn't it your prophet receives satanic verses? Hmm? Chapter 5, verse number 42. And if you go to verse number 39, it says that shaitan was misled by Allah, was deceived by Allah. So Allah is the biggest shaitan. Shaitan is a victim of Allah. And now, Shaitan, he says, because you mislead me, I'm going to mislead them. And then Allah, he said to him, you can mislead as you wish, except my true servants. Do you see it? Hmm. Any Muslim can answer? Abraham is quoting for us uh, Ezekiel chapter 13 verse number 22 you know let me show you Ezekiel here we go Abraham just to show you how stupid you are like your prophet oh you know you see this is the difference between us and the Muslims the Muslims they run away from a challenge here we take the challenge and we demolish it so he's quoting for you Ezekiel chapter 13, verse number 22. And by the way, don't trust whatever Muslim post. Go check it out yourself. But look what your Quran said. And now you will now you will try to hide again. Come with a different name. Keep changing your name. Look at this. Uh, <laughs> Moses. Uh, is that your word of your God? Read and laugh. And now you will never quote Ezekiel again. Allah, if you want to, to destroy a town, he order the wealthy one of it to do bad so he can destroy it. Is that your book? Change your name and come back. Switch between Abraham and Faisal. What do you think? Are you there? If Ezekiel is bad for you, well, then the Quran is bad for you. And by the way, the translation is very funny and not accurate. So we commanded the, the rich ones to commit sin so we can destroy it. And remember, the Muslims, they believe everything is a destiny, which means everything you do is not even a choice. So all sin all sin is from Allah because there is no choice sin is is a description for an action you do by choice if you've been forced to this is not a sin this is not a sin sin only if you do it by your own will if somebody forced somebody to shoot somebody 
Like let's say someone put a gun in your head, says, shoot him or I will shoot you. Yes, you killed the person, but you have been forced to. It's not you really who killed him. It was the other guy. Allah is the source of all sin. Every sin happening in this earth is from Allah. It's not from the man, according to Islam. Even the sin of Adam, and we showed you the story, how Adam was debating with Moses. And you know, the Muslim, they try to run away from the stupidity of their prophet by posting things that have nothing to do with it. And to make it more funny, still the Muslims are looking for verses in the Bible to find Muhammad. After all the garbage this guy, he just said, and the Muslims are leaving Islam, where is Gog and Magog? We cannot find them. How we build a dam between us and them? We cannot find a dam. We cannot find those trillions of people. We have satellite covering all the earth. We could not find one of them. And what the Muslims do? They want to find the verse about Muhammad in the Bible. Shaitan sleep in your nose. He piss in your ears. And what the Muslim they want to do? They try to find Muhammad in the Bible. The sun set in a muddy hot water. What the Muslim they do? Let us find Muhammad in the Bible. My friend, I can find you tons of verses about Muhammad in the Bible. The false prophets, the deceiver, the liar, the fraud, the scumbag. All of those is about your prophet. Hey, Prophet, did you did the Quran say the sun set in murky water? No, brother, no. The Quran says that this is from the perspective of Zul Qurnayn, brother. Hey, hold on. But isn't this is your Prophet explaining the verse? Yeah, yeah, no, the Prophet, he, you know, like this verse here, he, okay, let me read it for you. I was sitting behind Messenger of Allah, so, 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 so. And who riding donkey while the sun was setting? He asked, do you know where this is set? I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. He said, it's set in a spring of form, a water, Hamia. Okay, what's wrong? Hmm? You just told me that the sun setting from the perspective of the Quran. Yes, it's from the perspective of the Quran. It's not true. Okay. But did you see what your prophet just said? Well, the prophet did not say that. Okay, let's read again. I was sitting behind the message of Allah, so so, who was riding donkey while that the sun setting. He asked, Do you know where this is set? I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. He said, It's set in a spring of form water. Okay, so some friends, what's wrong with that? But this is an agreement with the Quran that the sun set in murky water. No, Uncle Semplens, it doesn't say that, CP. Where it says that? It says here, It's set in a spring of warm water. No, no, no. Listen, it says it's set in a spring of warm water. It doesn't say it's set in, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, what, you know, you know. Okay, so is it true that the sun set in a spring of water? Okay, Christian Prince, let me show you a verse from the Bible. It says that Muhammad is the prophet. This is a prophet who said that the sun set in murky water. Isn't it? This is a prophecy. He claimed that he knew the unseen. He knew where the sun goes and nobody knows. And now he found that the sun set in murky water. First of all, Christian Prince, this is Sahih, this is Da'if Hadith. This is Da'if. You know, it says here Sahih. Look, look. Sahih. You know, not only Sahih, Sahih in chain too. That's deep. Hmm. They try to escape. You know, we talk about donkey, they talk about monkey. We talk about monkey, there's... They, they, you know, they, they talk about Joe Biden. Muslims, we are showing you your stupid prophet. You know, forget about the Christians. You don't want to believe in their Bible. You don't believe in Jesus. No problem. But this is your prophet statement. What you will do with it? How he is a prophet of God? Hmm? You know, Abraham, Moses, I mean, you are a mixed shish kebab. Okay, 
the old Ezekiel one Ezekiel is about yelling at Israel saying what they do wrong telling about repent to God what does this have to do with my topic why Muhammadan cannot focus their brain for a second in the topic how in the world this person is a prophet of God I mean since two hours until now we are just quoting for you stupid story after stupid story And we just showed you how Yasser Qadi is saying our children are leaving Islam because of those tales. So how a Muslim can answer us? There is no answer. They try to escape from answering about what is stupid in their religion by saying, oh, you have a stupid religion too. But that will not, if this is true, that will not make your religion not stupid. You are just confirming the stupidity of your prophet. 